Hello, Charles. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Glad that you could play music with me in this decade. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. And last decade. <laughs> yeah. The, um, a few people have found our instrumentation a bit unusual, really. Though, to us, it's completely normal. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have been very interested in your bagpipes. They, they, most people seem to have the Scottish bagpipes as a reference point. Yes. And then possibly the uh, maybe the Irish pipes if they've come across the yes. chieftains or something. Tell um, us a bit about your or, pipes. Or then. indeed Northumbrian pipes. Yeah. And the common factor there is that all those are small pipes, which is what these are. So bagpipes um, are loud. Mm without going into too much technical detail. Yeah. Small pipes are more gentlemanly. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I see. Good. These, these are actually the interesting ones. These are um, historical, they're a modern copy, but they first appeared a, at the beginning of the 17th century, and they would have been played all over Northern Europe. They appeared in uh, a book by a German, who called them by the name he knew them, Hummelschen, which means bumblebee pipes. Yeah, well, I can see why they, they do call have a it buzzing that. sound, yeah. don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do buzz. A yeah. Gentle and they buzz. They can also yeah. be quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and your bazooki is an interesting instrument in itself as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, the pipes and the bazooki are the main things that we play. Yeah. Um, I would say they're the core of the music we do. My my bazooki is. Um, uh, made by a man called Peter Abnett and Bazooki is the one that most people tend to think of and uh, when you go on holiday what you see is a sort of slightly guitar shaped instrument but with a very rounded back now the difference with this Irish Bazooki is that the, the rounded back has actually been substituted for what they call a dished back which means that it's just very very slightly curved which gives it a, a nice bazooki sound, but makes it a lot easier to play, particularly when you're standing up. Right. Um, in fact, quite a lot of Irish bazookis that are made nowadays uh, don't have a curved back at all. They just have a completely flat back. Flat back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they're called Irish bazookis because um, um, Irish musicians have really taken to the bazooki and found it a really good um, accompanying instrument. It sort of moved really from its sort of solo role in the Greek bazooki tradition to more of an accompanying right. role yeah. in Irish music. Um, though there are some bazooki players like Andy Irvin who do do dazzling solos too. But um, so we're actually quite lucky that Peter Abnett's still making bazookis right. now, forty years down the line, and he's made me one number three hundred and eleven, three hundred and eleven standard bazooki made in June 2011. Very nice. Uh, the thing about the the Abnet bazooki with this slightly curved back is that it's got a lovely sustain. The sustain is beautiful. Uh, you can play a note and it'll ring afterwards. Can you hear that yeah, note yeah, of tone? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely one there. <laughs> but it's but it's a fantastic um, uh, the bazooki is really good for accompanying folk tunes yeah. and it's partly because um, this will take us more into the music we play ourselves but um, uh, partly because if you um, like a lot of folk music particularly early folk music you'll find that a lot of it is written in what they call modes uh, and modal music is a little bit like uh, Indian music, which is also written in modes. It's a, it's a way of writing um, that, um, that, that was done a long time ago, but has stayed with folk music so that even modern folk musicians will still use modes. And you know a lot more about well, modes and diatonic than I do. Well, you mentioned the word diatonic. I mean, the, in simple terms, I suppose, it's just 
that diatonic means major minor harmonies, which is what we're used to in most popular music today, as well as in, 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 in serious music of various types. Um, but um, yeah, the modes, um, I suppose that brings us to why we, why we choose the, the tunes that we do, because that was also the musical approach of the Middle Ages, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and um, so people think of, of church modes is a phrase that is used when teaching music, but it's not strictly true to say that that's where they come from. It, it was um, common throughout music making uh, in Europe, um, certainly Northern Europe, right from maybe the 12th century, which is really the earliest music that we have records of now. Mm. <laughs> I don't mean CDs, but yeah. written, <laughs> written record of. Um, right the way through, as you've quite rightly said, to, to folk music today. Yeah. And, and there are, what, there are about eight to, 12, eight to 12 major modes, are there? Like Dorian and heptatonic and yes, if, if, pentatonic. <laughs> well, these are two things. I mean, you've mentioned Indian music as well, which is very complex. The uh, Dorian mode you've mentioned, which is a particular uh, gap between notes as you go up a scale, yeah. and um, there are various other types of modes. And then you mentioned heptatonic and pentatonic. This refers to the number of notes there are within that octave scale. Um, we don't usually bother with that sort of stuff, do we? We just listen no. hard and play. We just, yeah. <laughs> we just play, yeah. But it, but it helps to have learnt that stuff in the past so that we know the, the world, the sound world that we're in when we play these... Um, medieval tunes that we've based a lot of the um, of, of, of our repertoire on mm. and a lot of the stuff that we do play um, um, is modal uh, as we said and it does help having instruments that drone yes because it gives you more room yes. to play within the modes and to do mm. lots of things like counter melodies and that unusual harmony is that if you were just playing say on a piano uh, you'd be really sort of dragged towards playing in a diatonic way yes and yes, um, you would. that would not necessarily work that well with the music. The drones actually add unexpected harmonies mm. um, because you, you inevitably, if you're playing a tune which uses many notes within a scale, yeah. um, if you've got a couple of n fixed notes, one fixed note or yeah. more, uh, then that becomes um, a, a, a seventh or a sixth or a fourth or a second. Yeah. So these, these odd harmonies that sound like discords, possibly to some ears, are actually part of the harmony that yeah. goes with with we, playing we, drone we a, instruments. We, we yeah. do do a lot of discords. <laughs> yeah. Shall we illustrate this? Shall yeah. we play the Reading Duck here, which has got some lovely discords? <laughs> So we, we started originally sort of playing a lot of um, medieval music and early medieval music and modal music because of our association with a, a community music group called Time Spanners. And that sort of really was the springboard to us starting to play together. Well, you set type, Time Spanners up, um, a group for um, learning disabled adults, wasn't it? Um, well, it was the idea of integrating learning disabled adults with... Um, full-time regular musicians Indeed. and and also enthusiasts Indeed. so that um, so that the two could play together and, and um, meet each other in, in a musical environment. Yeah. Indeed. And I remember you um, asking me to the first session um, 
and the group had already got together and knew each other and played some percussion together with you using bazooki and, and other instruments, guitar as well, I think, yeah. at the time and others. And you asked me to come along um, with pipes, these or some others, I can't remember, and um, just uh, improvise or play some medieval tunes that, that I had in my repertoire at the time yeah. and see how the two elements would, would mix. And yeah. uh, they mixed for a good ten years, I think. It did, ten years. And the idea, as you can guess from time span, is, is to not limit ourselves to music from the last 10 or 20 or 30 years, but to cherry-pick everything from the last thousand years. Indeed. <laughs> yes. And in fact, there was a Millennium Project, so that's sort of how it started, but then it turned into a regular music group. So I suppose the early music and the medieval music was a sort of starting point for us playing together, but quite quickly we started bringing in other things like folk songs, more modern folk songs. In. Well, there's uh, there's quite a lot of stuff from your old repertoire playing as a solo uh, artist, as well as with uh, bands through the 80s and 90s, um, which we've explored and, I think, given new breath to. Mm. Um, and then I've brought some of the tunes that, that I've known from working again with, with other groups yeah. um, in, in recent years, and um, we seem to get on quite well musically with all of those yeah. different influences. Yeah. Yeah, we do, and I think the, um, I mean, it's, uh, the, some of the tunes that we choose are, are, are several hundred years later than medieval music, but they sit quite well beside each other, and yes. Cockle Shell's Lily Bolero is a really well, these are 17th century tunes, so they're yeah. quite a lot later than this, yeah. the medieval ones, but they seem to fit in smoothly into the repertoire, they don't seem to jar at all, do they? No. Yeah, no. Um, some of the instruments and music was brought back from the Crusades, uh, was is is very much in that in that line, yeah. um, and in Mediterranean fact, and Middle Eastern. So indeed, things like the shawm, the bazooki, yes, the um, um, what else, tamboro, all those. Yes, yes, those yes, things, yes, yes yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we're yeah. very um, very much Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, mm. and uh, the Crusaders love the sound of it, just like they love the taste of spices, indeed. and they love the bright colours. And, and that brought, fed in, of course, to music then from later 16th and 17th yeah. centuries. So there is a, a historical musical link there, which uh, you could you could uh, follow if you were so inclined. So it, it's been quite easy with a lot of the tunes we play, especially the medieval tunes, to add um, what they call in Greek and um, Turkish music a taksim, an introduction to the tunes, so that you're not throwing the tunes straight at people, but you give, the, give them a minute or two or half a minute to get accustomed to the, the sound The sound that world that, we're, that they're in, yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to play a, a taxim, which we play at the beginning of a tune called Stella Splendens. Pipes. Tell us a bit more about them. They look very organic. Is that a sort of goat skin? Yeah, it's made from mostly goat is used in music, um, goat skin drums, etc., in, in folk music and traditional music. Uh, basically, what you've got is um, you mentioned shawms earlier coming over with the Crusades, and basically, what you've got is a shawm in a bag, yeah. and that can be played on its own. Of course, the player will eventually run out of breath. Mm. So it's rather a good scheme to have a bag attached to make the sound continue. When you do that, you can add a drone or more, so you have a fixed note going along with that as well. Hence bagpipes, or as these are, small pipes. Um, I also play oboe and, with you, cor anglais. And uh, that's basically a shawm as well, really. Yeah, yeah. They look very sophisticated, the modern orchestral um, cor anglais. But that's really all it is, is a tube with holes yeah. in, keys attached to make it chromatic, and um, a reed at the end that you, you blow through. 
Yeah, same so thing really. Very much reeds is yes, what you play. Yes, reeds exactly. But you do play pipe Double and reeds. tabor as well. Yeah. Yes, a little bit of pipe and tabor. And you of course play a Middle Eastern drum? Called Darabuka. Darabuka. Yeah. Maybe um, what we could do is play a little bit of Darabuka and a little bit of pipes. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>